Welcome my friend, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today, I am so excited for a new chapter in my life. For the last three and a half years, I've been living in a step van that I converted myself, which you can see here in the background, and many episodes on this channel of me building out this vehicle. It's been quite the learning experience. So the next phase is going to be a truck and trailer combination. So you can uh, look at a previous episode above where I'm talking about all of the logic and the thoughts behind that. But today I'm going out and shopping for my tow vehicle, my daily driver, the truck that's going to be towing the trailer. So let me tell you my thoughts on this, the logic that I'm going with. First, I don't know the size of the ultimate trailer that I'm gonna be building out. I don't know the weight, I don't know the length. Um, really don't know much about it and I don't know if I buy a small trailer and it's not going to be big enough maybe I sell it in two months and upgrade to a much longer trailer maybe it's going to be a 30 foot maybe a 40 foot uh, maybe it's going to be buying a pre-made tiny house there's a lot of things out there and a lot of unknowns so first criteria I wanted a vehicle that could tow almost anything so I started looking at the 3500 series dualies, um, which that's pretty much what I'm looking at today. I'm going to be traveling to look at a 3500 dually pickup truck. So when I say 3500, I mean the largest, well not the largest, but the largest of the commonly driven vehicles. Um, my second criteria. I love the engine that I have here in the step van. This is a Cummins 5.9 12 valve, and it's called the 6BT. That's a model from Cummins. It's a diesel. So I wanted to find that exact same engine. So I'm looking at the Dodge pickup truck, the 3500, and that's uh, years like 89 through 98 and a half. So today I'm going to be looking at one of those vehicles, that engine. And those are the most important criteria. I would say after that, having a cab that has a slight extended length behind the driver's seat so that I can push the seat back. I'm nearly six foot six, so I need that leg room. If I buy just a regular cab where it's smashed up the seat against the back, I can't get it quite far enough back. I need about an extra two to three inches there for my legs. So um, that was in the next criteria that I have. And then after that, it's the typical criteria that most of you have for your vehicles and finding lower miles, good mechanical condition, uh, all those things. Uh, the vehicle I'm looking at today is actually a flatbed. So anyway, my friend Dale here in Lakeland, Florida is helping me out and being a second set of eyes and being a co-pilot on this endeavor. So we're driving today from Lakeland all the way across Florida to the other side to Melbourne area to look at this truck. Um, everything on paper looks good on this truck. Uh, price is okay, a little bit on the higher side, uh, but it is still all very doable. So anyway, we're gonna go on a road trip, go look at this truck, maybe buy a new truck. Dale just showed up here, so we're getting ready to hit the road. I'm wearing a mask. I'm on the sort of cautious side of things. That's nothing, uh, no offense intended for Dale. It's just, uh, I'm just trying to be safe and do my thing. We're getting close. We're, we've been driving for nearly two hours, hour and 45, and we're approaching Melbourne area. I guess it's actually in- One and a half miles. Yeah, one and a half miles. So this is uh, Palm Bay we're driving to, from Lakeland over to Palm Bay, and uh, looking at a flatbed truck, and I am super stoked, excited, trying not to get my hopes up, but on paper, 
this is everything that I think that I want. Of course, I've had experiences before where I purchased a vehicle like my box truck, drove it for two months and realized it was just not a good fit, not the right vehicle. So um, I have a devil's advocate sitting over here next to me, Dale. He's a plain just a chauffeur. Devil. Just uh, a devil. Just a devil. He's been really good at helping me walk through the logic and to figure out all the pros and cons of different kinds of vehicles and like had you thought of, I think that's Dale's expression there, had you thought of such and such, had you thought of doing this, had you thought of going with X vehicle. So anyway, we're uh, exiting now and uh, should see the truck in a few minutes. Destination. And we are arriving yeah, at the is. shop should be here somewhere it's right there we've arrived at the shop i can see the flatbed over there so i'm going to go and find the owner and see if he's going to be okay with me shooting video all right i've arrived this is luke here okay. apparently he has a diesel shop here yeah. and uh, this truck out here so i'm really pleased and stoked that a guy knows diesels <laughs> and knows a little bit about vehicles yeah it's a little bit of everything we do here so so we're gonna take a look at this vehicle and uh, if you'll let me, I'll probably do a test drive here. Yeah. But uh, I'm gonna take a look around. This is the truck, it's a 3500. And so you say it was your buddy's before? Yeah. Are you selling it for him or no. did you buy from him? Mine. All right, I took a look. I'm gonna hop inside and do a test drive. This is a four-wheel drive, by the way, and a 1997 with the Cummins 12-valve 12, 12 6PT. We're back from the test drive, and I am going to ask this guy a few questions. Uh, just uh, nothing that is a deal breaker per se, but just things that I don't quite understand yet. So we're going to ask him to come out. It is a, quite a bit quieter than the step and the drive. Transmission shifts well engine has decent power uh, so all those things are good i have the title here in my hand i have purchased a truck so i just got to give the cash to the guy and get a bill of sale and drive the thing back to two hours back to lakeland well in an interesting development about an hour all the way back to lakeland engine died it's like it's out of fuel uh fuel tank is I thought at a quarter and now it's dropped down to about a tenth, so maybe I'm just simply out of fuel. I'm just right across from a fuel station. I'm going to try to get some fuel and put it in it, but diesels are really hard to start if they don't have fuel. Well, this is definitely not how I wanted to start out purchasing a vehicle new to me, a used vehicle, um, but it seems like I'm stranded. We put about two gallons of diesel fuel in it. It just turns over. It looks like it's a star for fuel. It's not running. Um, I do know that this particular vehicle, he replaced the fuel pump, the mechanical fuel pump, with an electronic fuel pump. So it's possible that for whatever reason that is not working or is failing. Uh, or maybe there's a greater issue that I'm not aware of. Anyway, I'm stranded about uh, halfway back to Lakeland. Dale's here with me. I'm going to start making some telephone calls, try to reach out to Steve and Badge, uh, see if I can get some advice. But chances are I'm going to have to get a tow to a local mechanic and uh, take it from there. So uh, not exactly how I planned on my return trip. And maybe there's a lesson to be learned with buying vehicles uh, significant distance from your house. Well, I made my telephone calls. Badge went to voicemail, so I sent him a text message trying to reach him. However, I was able to reach Steve in Colorado. Steve had some excellent advice. He said that if I did run out of fuel, that I need to prime the fuel line. So back off the nuts where they connect to the engine block and then have somebody turn over the ignition, which Dale is here to do that. So we did that. And we're supposed to wait till it starts bubbling on each one, stop cranking and tighten up that nut and move to the next one until uh, we've got them all secure again. And each of them has just bubbled a little bit with fuel, which is pushing the air out of them. So we tried that, but not getting any fuel. Uh, we had to come out of one of them, but no fuel to any of the others. So I think I've got a fuel pump problem. So the only other thing we can try, and I called back Steve, 
is to use some ether, some starting fluid, and just do little spurts of that during the engine cranking. Well, unfortunately, I'm stuck. Battery is dead. Uh, starter fluid did not work. Uh, Dale's being kind enough to drive me over. There's a mechanic nearby and gonna see if they'll work me into their schedule. And then I'll get back to Lakeland an hour from here and I'll just have to wait for the mechanic. I don't know what else to do at this point. Did a Google search for the nearest diesel mechanic just down the road. Turns out it's a guy's house and Handy Andy's Diesel Service and he does on the road mobile repairs so he is here $75 an hour he says he should be able to get me running really soon so Andy is here he's already started at work but we're having trouble getting the hood open uh, the latch is no longer working so uh, he says he can get this open here shortly and have my fingers crossed and will be on the road soon success it took him probably Two minutes, maybe a minute and a half. He found the fuel shutoff solenoid and a wire apparently was loose and uh, he jiggled that, did something in there. But my battery is almost dead, but it's turning over. It's doing really well now and almost started. So he's going to turn around and give me a jump start and um, I might be uh, started and maybe it's just the fuel cutoff solenoid. So crossing my fingers, maybe I'll be on the road just in a couple minutes. We're doing a jump start now. Get some juice over here and then crossing fingers and saying maybe we'll start. Well, we discovered a couple of things. Guys are back here putting more fuel in. We're putting five more gallons of diesel in, so a total of seven. Uh, it's running. We got it running. Let me show you what we discovered. Here is the fuse panel. It's broken away. You see this red wire here. This red wire goes to a newly installed fuel pump. So there's three fuel pumps. There's the mechanical one that came with the Dodge. There's a new sump pump, which is underneath, and that pulls from the bottom of the fuel tank. And then there's an inline fuel pump, and that's what this is for the inline fuel pump. And this cable had come loose here, and so it was not getting power. So um, Andy, the mechanic, discovered that. We've reattached this. It's starting and running when I walk back with this five-gallon gas uh, can here full of diesel. So we're filling it up. Uh, we'll start it up. We'll take it across the street over here to the fuel station and uh, get full of diesel and then hopefully back on the road just right as the sun is setting over here. My name is Andy. I run uh, Andy Andy's Auto and Diesel Repair. We're just taking a look at this, uh, this Dodge 3500. With the Cummins 6 b team, and we had a little problem with the uh, probably the fuel gauge and a combination of uh, a faulty fuel gauge and some homemade wiring uh, to the fuse box with an uh, inline fuel pump. So we got a good solid connection on the fuel pump, got the system reprimed, and should be on his way. So I'm on the road again. I've just topped off the fuel tank and uh, Andy was uh, just theorizing that maybe when they put in the new sump pump that he pushed the float up and so the float when it's at a quarter of a tank was actually empty and that it's off by a quarter of a tank. So I'm going to always keep it at least a half a tank or more full until I figure out what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to hit the road. Dale's waiting on me. I just sort of want to follow up and clarify what happened. I made it back to Lakeland, no problems. Uh, everything was super smooth after Handy Andy got the truck running. Uh, but in recap, what we learned is, uh, I guess, three things. One, I ran out of fuel, and I ran out of fuel because the float was wrong and the gauge was wrong. Number two, uh, that wire came loose on the fuel pump. So that was really uh, it, and once I had that wire fixed and then had fuel in it, then I was able to go again. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future episode.